So it seems that it's kind of the normal for people to think that you need a multi thousand dollar setup to really shoot anything cinematic, whether that's a music video or a movie or really any kind of big camera work. And as you may know, a lot of photographers like myself are pretty broke, so a multi thousand dollar setup is kind of unrealistic. But in the past, there have been really big level productions that have used smaller DSLR bodies in their work when it comes to working in a tight place or just the conveniency of having a small camera body. A lot of people kind of overlook this because they think they need the newest camera and it does benefit having the best features and the newest stuff, but you still can create pretty good work on these older cameras with a little bit of work around. So in today's video, I just wanted to share a movie that was shot basically on all old DSLR bodies and these are pretty consumer level besides one and they're pretty easy to get. So if you don't know the movie 127 Hours with James Franco, it's basically about the climber Aaron Ralston and him getting stuck for 127 hours. It's a really good movie, it looks really nice, really good lighting and everything. I enjoyed it, it was really good. And I didn't really question the camera quality or anything like that, it did not not look cinematic to me. So. I was pretty surprised when I stumbled upon this. So 127 Hours was released in 2010. The three primary cameras they used to shoot the movie were the Canon EOS 1D Mark IV, the Canon 5D Mark II, and the Canon 7D. So if you were to check the price of these cameras today on eBay, you're going to be looking at around 400 bucks for the 5D Mark II, around $200 for the 7D, and around 1000 bucks for the 1D Mark IV. So altogether, that's $2,000 almost, and that is three camera bodies that were used to shoot this movie. Now, obviously, at the time, these were way more expensive. This was a multi-thousand dollar setup in 2010. But when you're comparing this to today's prices and you're comparing the quality of that movie to today's movies, I really don't see that huge of a difference. Now, interestingly enough, they did do a post-processing with film. They used Vision 250D, 500T, and 50D. So obviously, most people don't have access to that because that is a super expensive of process so that is something to factor in they also use cook lenses with the camera so that also kind of you know definitely made them look way better as those are tens of thousands of dollars and they're from like the 50s surprisingly those lenses are super old but people still pay thousands of dollars because of the optics and everything so pretty interesting right there. There were some other cameras used, but they were just smaller cameras to get different shots. And they also used the original VHS camcorder that Aaron Ralston had when he was trapped filming his videos, surprisingly enough. But I did just find it very interesting that they did use three cameras that you can realistically get today for a pretty reasonable price, especially the 5D Mark II and the 7D. I don't really know much about the 1D Mark IV, so I can't really say anything about that camera, but the 5D Mark II is something that I've used for a while actually it's like my go-to camera i'm usually always using this camera when i'm either filming and trying to get full frame you know a lot of depth of field or if i'm you know i have filmed with this camera before but i haven't really had any pro lenses until recently video on that soon so when factoring this in if you realistically wanted to get a full frame and a crop sensor camera that have shot a multi-million dollar production movie you could get the 5d mark ii and the 7d for under a thousand dollars realistically you can get both of these cameras for under $500 if you look hard enough. And I mean, this is gonna be a pretty nice setup. I mean, it filmed the movie that made millions of dollars in the box office and it had a multi-million dollar budget behind it. So it is pretty interesting to see that they chose these cameras. And I think it should kind of just be a sign that you could use older cameras and older gear to make pretty good stuff, you know, short films and get recognition to maybe use the better stuff. I don't know. I've always found that some people either are cursed by having the old gear or they look at it as a learning experience, you know, Know, kind of getting used to gear so whenever it's time to use better stuff they kind of already know what's happening i mean i feel like that's a pretty good way to look at it but you know everybody's kind of different so it's a different situation for everyone and if you do think about it 2010 is really not that long ago i mean i've watched plenty of shows that are from the early 2000s and they look great the shows weren't shot in 12k you know super hd like today's cameras they were really just film cameras or really early digital you know cinema cameras so i never really try to like focus on the actual camera body really it's the lens the lens really does help out a lot i feel like having a nice aps-c and full frame camera whenever you're trying to film something would be a pretty good choice and with having these two cameras that have shot a hollywood movie I feel like you really can't go wrong hopefully this helps out my fellow broke filmmakers out there you know maybe you can find one of these on ebay you can definitely find one for super cheap even if you check keh so yeah thank you guys for watching and later